WMNH. Rip the knob off. That is called Want You, and the band is Under the Horizon, and uh, we're going to be talking to these fine people in just a moment. This is Matt Connerton Unleashed, and we are live from the studios of WMNH 95.3 FM in glorious Manchester, New Hampshire, streaming live, of course, at WMNHradio.org and at my website, mattconnerton.com, and... uh, Go to mattconnerton.com slash live, in fact. And Jenny is here, of course, at the news table. Why can't I hear you? Well, 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 well there we go. Sorry. You turned me off <laughs> I again. I did. Oh, I did. This is what I put up with. That's what happens. You... I am present at account of what, yes. what happens when what? <laughs> when you get up and leave the room. <laughs> uh-huh. Uh-huh. Yes. Yeah, you are. And and my co- back is turned. That's yeah. what it is. Yes, yes. And, uh, of course, uh, today is Saturday, August 24, 2024. And uh, joining us uh, live in studio, we do have the members of Under the Horizon. Uh, we have Matt, Jordan, and Izzy. Did I get everyone's uh, name correctly? Yep. Yeah. Yes, welcome, welcome. And, um, and uh, Matt, you've got a, a proud uh, proud papa in studio with you. Yes, I he, do. He doesn't want to be on, on a microphone, but, no. uh, but I know this man very well from back in the day. Yes, I've so, heard. Wonderful yeah. to see him. And he looks and he looks the same. He hasn't changed, which is cool. I get that a lot, actually. I hear that he looks pretty similar other than the hair. Right, right. Well, yeah, that's but, that's true of all of us, but right. but because but, when I when I run into people, when I see people I haven't seen in a really long time, I just expect them to be like, you know, 
not the same. Sure. Yeah. But but he looks the same, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> which, which is nice. <laughs> yeah. Which is uh, which is really cool. But uh, no, I love that track. Um, now the three of well, actually, so what does everybody do in the band? So Matt, you're the drummer. Yes, I am drummer and vocalist. Drummer and vocalist in Jordan. Guitarist, some vocals. In some vocals and. Bassist and vocalist. Okay, it's now what's interesting about that is so. Um, and you probably hear this all the time. There's not a lot of singing bass players for whatever reason. There's some, but we were talking about that with our um, our guest in the previous hour, uh, Ian Hemi, um, his project Silicon Kong. He's a singing bass player, but, but it's not something you, you see a lot of no. for, for, for whatever reason. But um, so, yeah, is it is it just the three of you on all the recordings? Because you sound yes. for a three piece and you probably hear this a lot, too. But for a, a, a trio, you got a big sound. Right. Yeah. 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 It's just the three of us. Um, and we kind of, we thought about adding like another guitarist into the mix, you know, like a lot of bands, they yeah. have a rhythm and a lead guitarist. But part of the reason why we started this band was because we were aggravated with the difficulties of our previous bands that we were already in. So we're like, we don't want to add anyone to complicate the mix. You know? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, it's just the three of us. Um, we all really trying to kind of work together to create our sound. And on the album, we wanted, like you said, a big sound, but we also wanted it to not sound impossible to achieve live. You know what I mean? Yeah. Is that ever a challenge? I would uh, say no. No. I mean, there's definitely, there's definitely some times where like, it feels a little different, but for the most part, it seems pretty full like live. Yeah. Which is cool. Yeah, that is, that is, um, by the way, I have to compliment you on, well, I think I, I mentioned it too, when you walked yeah. in, but your shirt, Ace Fraley, Thank uh, you. Kiss is my all time favorite band and, uh, Me too. <laughs> I love Ace. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, very cool. Very cool. Yeah. yeah 10,000 volts. I, I remember when that came out and it, it, um, people were kind of surprised that it was as successful as it was, yeah. you know? I mean, it sounded, uh, was it compared to his last albums? Like it sounded a little different. It had a different vibe to it. And yeah. I liked how it was produced and stuff. And his voice was a lot more, it seemed like he was doing a lot more actual singing than just right. like talking into the mic and being like, New York, New York. <laughs> <laughs> right, right. <laughs> I agree. I agree. So how long has this existed, this band? How long have the three of you been, um, been doing this? Uh, almost a year now. Like I think late September will be a year. So Okay. Well, that's impressive that, you know, it's it's been under a year and you've already got, how many tracks are on the album? Nine? Nine. Nine. Yeah. And, uh, oh, and for people watching online here, let me put the overhead camera on so, so I can show. So um, Mike uh, gave me a copy of this, Under the Horizon, and uh, I'll kind of hold that up for the camera. Probably, I'll, I'll hold it up in pictures too afterward. But who did the, um, I like the artwork. Who did the artwork? Um, I, I mean, I guess, I guess I would be the culprit of that but yeah it wasn't i will admit we didn't like hand draw that we used um ai because i saw a lot of the stuff that people were doing with ai creating images and all that and i liked how it could create a somewhat surreal scenario like almost something mm -hmm. you would see in a dream because it's not perfect right you know it's um it's different it's nothing's exact everything's a little mismatched and all that so we used that's interesting we came up with that or we got that from ai when we were trying to figure out album covers yeah and we just really liked it and we're like you know what let's embrace this new technology mm -hmm. here and that's what you see on the album cover there um, there is artwork though on the actual disc that uh, I yes yeah done, so. oh no kidding okay yeah. yeah okay cool um I'm such a nerd for this stuff. Do you remember like what kind of prompts you used to get that? Do you remember? So, um, <laughs> I think it was like a, it was like a setting called like Halloween oh. themed or something like that because we wanted to go something like kind of gothy, kind of metal, kind of, you know, to fit with our sound. So I got that and I got a couple of images and I sent them all to the band and they were like, yeah, we like that one. So yeah. it just ended up being the cover. Yeah, no, I dig it. Yeah. 
I know that's an odd question. Probably, you know, you, you don't expect to be asked, you know, what kind of prompts did you use? <laughs> no. <laughs> I think it's a good question because I didn't yeah. know that you had to do yeah. that. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We're, we're so fascinated around here by AI in general. That's something Jenny and I talk about a lot on the show is AI and the impact on the music industry and how people are using it to create. And uh, no, that's very, very cool. Where was the, uh, where's the, uh, the picture on the back, of course, is a band photo. Where was that taken? My backyard. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Uh, yeah, we were taken, that was before we filmed the video for our song, Orchids in the Sunrise. Mm. And we were just like, let's take band pictures, you know, cause we're all done up or whatever and nice clothes or metal clothes, whatever you want to say. Yeah. And we were just going around my house, taking photos and we went out back to, uh, that truck that I'm leaning up against. That's a project truck of mine that I'm working on. Yeah. And we were just random took the picture and we were looking through and we we're like, wow, that's actually a really good photo of us. Let's use that on the back cover. Yeah. Yeah. Um, oh, we had a question. I don't want to forget too. And, and Jenny mentioned it. There's a question in the chat room. Uh, Alan McIntyre yes. joins us in the chat and says, ask Izzy what her favorite song by Vixen is. <laughs> LOL. <laughs> no. That's a joke between us. You don't have a favorite Vixen song? No. How, how dare you? <laughs> I did get to meet uh, Brit Lightning, though. Did uh, you? Yeah. In February, yeah. Oh, because they just played at, uh, they play, was it at the Tupelo? They just played there, right? Because um, it was, um, I'm not quite sure. Because we had a band on uh, Purging Sin. I don't know if you know Purging Sin. But yeah, they, I've heard of them, actually. Yeah. They they opened, they when they were here on the show a couple months ago, they were talking about opening for Vixen, which was weird, <laughs> weird to me, because Purging Sin, they're very dark and heavy. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and uh, I'm like, you you did, <laughs> but, but I think but they did it. I think it was at the Tupelo. Oh. But um, yeah, so you met Brit Lightning. Uh, yeah, I did like this uh, rock and roll fantasy camp uh, in oh. L.A. And yeah, I got to meet a lot of like people who actually made it in the industry. Like, so you you went to one of those? Yes, I did. Oh no, kidding! I got to uh, meet Nancy Wilson as well. Oh wow! She's like my idol. So I was gonna say, yeah, she must be. Yeah, yeah. Um, who else? Who else w was there? There was like a really good handful. Um, there was a couple of people like that were there to meet. Like, um, they had the brothers of STP. Um, oh, the DeLeos, and, yeah. Yeah, and um, I mean, also some of the counselors that were there. Um, yeah, I mean, there was a lot of like good people. There was a bassist of LA Guns. Uh, his name is Johnny Martin. Okay. Yeah, he was like a kind of. The person who ran my little group, because we had a, uh, we there was a couple of bands that we uh, at the camp, and um, we played at uh, the Viper Room, yeah, and the Troubadour. Oh, very cool. Yeah, it's pretty fun. Yeah, I always see I see videos of these um, these rock and roll fantasy camps online, and they they look uh, they look really fun. Um, so what? So you, what, when you say your little group, so what, what? What did they divide everyone into groups, and then you had like yeah. one of these one of these uh, famous. Rock stars kind yeah, of runs the group and, exactly. and, uh, and then what is there, is there a process of like, you all write a song together or? Um, no, we more just like pick a couple songs to work on between like, like it's around four days Yeah, and we perform them. I mean, I was with the other teenagers. Okay. We were all teens. Oh, very cool. Is it, how many days is it? Um, I think mine was four days. Oh, no kidding. Yeah. Wow. That, that's wild. That's wild. Um, wh what, uh. Why did you, why did you, like, what motivated you to, to go and, and do that? Um, well, I actually had gotten it as a gift, but, oh. uh, mostly to meet Nancy Wilson. Yeah. I'm yeah. a huge fan of her. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, that, that's, uh, that's very cool. Is she, um, I mean, is she an influence on you vocally or I, I mean, I would think Ann Wilson would probably yes, be definitely. a big, big, big influence. I'm a yeah. Huge heart fan. Yeah. Yeah. No doubt. Um, who, who else is an influence on you, uh, in terms of your vocals? I would say, uh, Pat Benatar a lot and a bit of Joan Jett as well. Really? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Oh, that's cool. That's cool. Now, what about you, Jordan, in terms, obviously, Ace Fraley, yeah. a, a big influence. Who Huge. else influences you on guitar? Um, In terms of guitar, I'd say like some Van Halen. Yeah. You know, Eddie Van Halen, definitely really influential. Yeah. All the tapping and all that stuff. I've gotten some things about how there's Randy Rhodes type stuff. Yeah. In my guitar playing, which like, I do like Randy Rhodes. Um. So I'd say him too. Yeah. Kirk Hammett, you know, people like that. Yeah. Um, they, I think what makes them so special is they take 
sometimes they can take fairly simple things Mm -hmm. and they'll put it in the song as a solo and make it fit, which is like a pretty good skill to have, you know, like Mm -hmm. just because it's fast and flashy doesn't mean it's good, you know? Right, right. (laughs) Yeah, no, I know what you mean. And I can hear, I can hear the Kirk Hammett in your solos. I can definitely hear that. Yeah. 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 Uh, What about you, Matt, as far as uh, drums and, or, or vocal, because you, you sing too, right? Yeah. Uh, Oh God, there's a lot. I mean, my, primary influence for drums i mean a lot of people laugh when i say it but i'll say it because it's true uh it's lars ulrich from metallica i i saw metallica when i was like 10 and for some reason something about lars up on stage behind the drum set it just really inspired me to play yeah so then i picked it up and i mean i'm influenced by him and joey jordison a slipknot all the drummers of slipknot really they're all great um vinnie paul neil mm. pert you know all the good guys who give you a lot to listen to on the drum set. Right, right, yeah. Um, and vocally, I'd say my primary influences are uh, James Hetfield and Corey Taylor. Yeah. Yeah, Metallica and Slipknot. I can hear the Corey Taylor. Oh, thank you. I appreciate that. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, and in terms of the songwriting, I mean, how, how does that work in this band? Do you all write together? Does somebody bring in an idea and you... I think what happened, it's a mix. Yeah, yeah, it's a mix. It, of it, yeah. It's it's definitely like one person will come in with lyrics, or they'll have like with Izzy want you. She had the lyrics and she had the you know bass notes, you know whatever the notes were, and I was like, it kind of just formed together. He came up with this drum part on the spot. I made my own guitar part, and we kind of just experimented a couple times, ran it you know through three or four times maybe. Um, that quick yeah, yeah. it, it yeah. comes together really fast it's surprising well but... that's that's when you know you've really got something right, <laughs> right. when the songs come together <laughs> yeah. quickly right. then you yeah. know you know you've got that that magic you know yeah. right yeah well I, I assume some of these songs because you know some of them are, are you know that's a, a fairly straightforward song but some of them are, are are pretty complex i mean i would imagine the more complex ones take longer or maybe not i mean realistically all the songs that we have wrote i mean we're at max took us an hour to write and get fully played with, you know, all of us together or at the very least the instrumental part of it, obviously lyrics come later with some songs, but I mean, most of the stuff that we have done, I mean, there were days that we wrote three or four songs (laughs) in a day within the span of a four hour practice. No kidding. Oh yeah. Yeah. Wasn't it like, it was better in and out, and I'm pretty sure it was. It might have been within my eyes. I'm not sure though. Yeah, something. Yeah, yeah, because <laughs> we all, you know, because we were all three of us used to be in cover bands. Oh, me no and, kidding. Yeah, yeah, me and Jordan were in a cover band together, and Izzy was in a cover band. And actually, how me and Izzy met was that both of our cover bands played in a battle of the bands together. Oh, wow. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and we we both met up afterwards. I'm like, hey, you're really good at vocals. And she's like, yeah, you're really good at drums. So we just kind of like, okay. And then years later, we decided let's form something here. So we were in our own cover band. So we had all this time to come up with these riffs and songs and lyrics and stuff mm. for the day that we were eventually in an original band, what yeah. we wanted to be in. Yeah. So it all came together really quickly. And I mean, We've already started writing for the second album. We have like half of it already. Yeah. No ahead. kidding. So, yeah. Wow. I mean, I'd say we wrote most of our songs. Like we wrote the eight songs that we have that are original um, mm-hmm. within like three or four months. No kidding. Yeah. yeah we yeah. Had record. We started recording in April. So. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Three months, I think. Yep. Oh, by the way, talking about influences, um, somebody in the chat room uh, made me uh, realize. Um, I think it was. I think it was Alan McIntyre. Oh yeah. Um. Mention I I never asked you about bass. Um, I mean I'm a bass player, so I can't believe I forgot to ask you. But your influences on bass, I am curious. I mean, I guess like my bass lines aren't really too complex because I'd say I do vocal like I focus more on the vocals. Yeah, per se. I mean, there are a lot of great basses that I love, but it is a bit difficult to sing and play the bass, which is why I feel you find a lot less basses and vocalists. Interesting. Yeah. So you keep it fairly simple. Yeah. 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 Um, what about like, do you approach it any differently? Like if, if Matt's singing, do you approach that any differently as far as the, your bass or do you, I mean, like as of like, like our first album, I it's still not 
too complex, but I'm definitely getting more into the creative writing part of bass, bass lines. Okay. Um, Isaac Banks is uh, asking, uh, and this isn't anone uh, you would know. Uh, we, 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 Jenny and I are very familiar with Isaac Banks, aren't we? <laughs> Isaac Banks is asking, Izzy, uh, who are your influences? What's your favorite Evanescence song? Do you have a favorite Evanescence song? Um, Probably more likely that you have a favorite Evanescence than Vixen. <laughs> <laughs> um, right now, it's Going Under. I love that song vocally. It's yeah. amazing. Yeah. No, Amy Lee's a great, uh, she's a great singer. Definitely. Absolutely. Absolutely. Now, are, in terms of um, in terms of the band and like, do you all, as a band, do you have a particular vibe or a particular sound that you try to achieve, or is it more it's organic? It's it. How does that How does that work? I mean, I say we have a, uh, a various amount of sounds. All of our songs are kind of different, but they all still sound like they're made by us. Yeah. Right. What I'd say. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I think my dad. He was. I think he might have been like one of the first people to be like. Yeah, I mean, all the songs are, like, really unique, but they all have a specific touch to them that mm -hmm. makes it, like, ident you know, has some identification to us. Yeah. Which is, like, great. Yeah. We have a different sound on every song, which makes the album seem a little more, like, experimental, I guess. Yeah. But you can still be like, oh, yeah, this is that one band. It's not like there's features on the band or random people just coming in and playing songs. Or right. Songs. It's, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, it's definitely, I th I'd say that our sound is definitely more metal focused, or at least we're, you know, aiming to be more considered a metal band. But mm -hmm. even then, you know, we have a lot of influences outside of, you know, the basic rock and metal. But even within that, we like bands that often, you know, you wouldn't picture their fans being in the same room. Right. <laughs> you, you know right, what right, I mean? Yeah. Like, I don't think there's a lot of dinner parties happening with heart fans, uh, kiss fans and like, I don't know, Slayer fans or something like that. You know, I'm using that as an example. Right. But I mean, I think from the beginning with all our influences combined, we kind of tried to create something like if heart was written by like Slipknot or something like that, you know, yeah. something yeah. heavy, but with a little bit of like glam edge of the past or something like that you know something a sound that most people can listen to you know we you know kind of like your second ever metal band you're listening to or whatever something like that mm -hmm. you know what i mean well what i think uh, too is cool about about your sound and and a band like this is there's a timelessness to it yeah because you know if you if if you displayed this for me and and i didn't know anything about you and you said when do you think this was recorded i wouldn't know <laughs> you know, it, 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 it's, it, yeah. it, it could have been yesterday. It could have been 30 years ago. Yeah. There's a, there's a timelessness to it that I think is really cool. Well, thank you. So, yeah. Thank oh, you. Ab absolutely. Yeah. Um, are you playing a lot of shows? Are you doing a lot of live stuff or? Uh, yeah, well, actually funny enough, we're doing a show tonight. Um, we're doing one, uh, with two other bands, Tainted Hearts and Day to Attend. Oh, Day to Attend. We had them on the show recently. Oh, I did you? Love Day to Attend. We've had them on a oh, couple yeah. times. Oh, they're amazing. I love Jeff's voice. And, yeah, uh, he's a good vocalist. And the new album is so good. Yeah. It's so good. That They have they have this one song, uh, Not Coming Back. It gets stuck in my head. Like <laughs> some days I wake up with it in my brain. Yeah, I love, sorry. I, I just, I love Day to Attend. Yeah, absolutely. So you're playing with them tonight? Yeah, at the <laughs> yeah. Rochester Performing Arts Center. Excellent. Uh yeah, all ages. Show starts at 8 for if anyone wants to come and see us. And then we're also opening up for Great White. Yes. At the Tupelo Music Hall in Derry. Yep, uh, Jenny and I are going to be at, at, uh, at that show. Good to know. Uh, anyone who wants to come to that again, all ages, 5.30. And then we have, um, we're opening up for Queensryche. Again. Oh, no kidding. Yep, at oh. Tupelo Music Hall in Derry. Uh, that one starts at 6.30. And then we have Keen Music Fest in Keen um, at one thirty. I'm looking at my notes here. Sorry, uh, <laughs> <It's all right>. <laughs> <laughs> one thirty uh, to two fifteen. Uh, so yeah, we're starting to get some shows, and I mean the two shows there, Great White and Queensrÿche. I remember he came out to me. I was working on my car. He came out to me. He's like, 
I need to tell you something. I don't even know if I can tell you. And I'm like, <laughs> what, what is it? You know what I mean? You know, and he's like, I got you guys an opening slot for a great white in Queensryche. And we're like, what? You know what I mean? Yeah. There's a thing in the group chat that we're like, how is this even possible? Yeah. You know, it's yeah. still, I don't even think it's still even fully set into no, us. We're playing tomorrow. Right. Yeah. yeah right. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. No, that's awesome. That's awesome. Oh, by the way, too, your dad gave us these. Uh, I'll Let me put the big camera on again so I can hold this up. You'll be able to see it better in the pictures. We'll take pictures after the show. But this uh, this wonderful shirt. I love it. So is that your official logo on the shirt? Um, that the- that's a that's a little bit of a complicated situation there. That, oh. that I Well, I mean, I guess so, yeah. Like, it's kind of like our little, I guess, mascot, you could say. We don't even have, like, a name for it yet or anything. But oh. it's just something I... It's something I honestly like sketched out in a little piece of notebook paper and sent to them. And they're like, we love that. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, I guess it's our logo, mascot. I don't really know. Like, I, I will I will see it in my uh, nightmares uh, this evening. <laughs> just, just so you know. But no, uh-huh. no, that's cool, though. That's Thank cool. You. Yeah. And I mean, you know, you've got plenty of time to, you know, over time, you can always maybe come up with a backstory or, right. you know, or whatever. Give it a give it a name, you know, like. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah. No, that's cool. That's cool. And I like the, yeah, I like the, where does the name come from, by the way, under the horizon? Um, it, it's funny. Um, we can't, so when we first started to like write originals, we were like, yeah, we need a name. And we came up with all these names. I think one that I remember is you came up with just in because you want like new generation of, you know, artists or whatever. Mm-hmm. I what, went on. Wait, to, wait, uh, wait, what was it going to be? It was going to be just in. Oh, right? okay. Um, I went on to Google and searched up like cool band names or whatever. <laughs> yeah. And yeah. it came up with over the horizon or something or over a horizon. Okay. I didn't like that. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. So I was like under, under sounds gloomy, under sounds metal. Yeah. I yeah. Guess. Yeah. No, it does. It does. <laughs> um, yeah. So, and I came back and I was like, Hey, what do you think about under the horizon? Yeah. And everybody was like, Oh yeah. You know, it's cool. We like it. Yeah. It wasn't until Izzy wrote the title track under the horizon where we really like had a meaning behind it. Yeah. Yeah. Right? yeah. No, that makes sense. Did you, did you go through any others that you kind of, I love hearing about rejected band names. Were there, were there any others or, or did that one present itself pretty early? I think you had some. I was going to say, I feel like I contributed some, but I can't, can't they must have been so bad that i can't even remember <laughs> what they, they are right they, now yeah, yeah. i'm not gonna i'm not gonna say they were bad it was just they were a lot more i don't know didn't have that ring to it they didn't have that yeah, ring. Didn't have they were very like i, I don't want to say stock metal names but yeah. they had yeah. a very like predictable type of name to it yeah they yeah. were cool but yeah. like right and they wasn't what we were looking for right they didn't really fit our style because i guess to me, with my musical influences, I always thought that the original band that I was going to end up in was going to be the next Slayer, the next Pantera, right. the next, right. you know, whatever. So I came up with all these names with, like, blood and, like, all this, <laughs> you know, angry, violent things, you know what I mean, in metal music. And then, you know, here it was like, well, it's not just metal. It's not just speed. It's not just death. Right. It's not whatever, you know what I mean? It's all these, it's a... What's that word? I don't know. A melting pot oh, of all our influences. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, a crucible. That's the oh, $10 oh. vocabulary word for nice. that one right there. Yeah. Well played, sir. Of, uh, thank you. <laughs> of all our musical influences. So my names didn't really work. But yeah, Under the Horizon came and it was like, mm. yeah. Yeah. That fits for us. Yeah. yeah. I mean, part of the challenge, too, when, when naming a band is trying to find something that nobody else already has or, yeah. you know, Difficult. so. So you don't get yeah. in any trouble. Um, you know, uh, th- obviously there was a time and, uh, you know, he, he's old enough to remember too when, uh, you know, when, when you couldn't just go online and just Google something and just, you know, right. figure right. out if somebody else yeah. already uh, already has it. So I, I tell this story a lot. Um, I went to high school with, and he might even be listening, uh, Xander Carlson, uh, really, really talented guitarist. I think he's still active in the scene. But, um, and he and I were in a band in high school just kind of briefly, but I ran into him after high school and he had a band called, um, he's telling me about this new band he's in. He said, uh, it's called intuition. And he said that to me and immediately I'm thinking, Oh God, somebody's 
intuition? It's too obvious. There's probably already a thousand bands that right. are already out there using that name. Right. And I, I swear to God, I ran into him again. I just happened to run into, we shopped at the, the same uh, convenience store. I, I run into him again, like six months later. And I asked him, how's the band? And he goes, oh, good. But we had to change our name because we heard from some cover band in Massachusetts. They're, they're already using the name and right. they don't want us using it. Um, and, and I, you know, I'm too polite to say it, but in my mind, I'm thinking, yeah, no kidding. <laughs> but, of course yeah, that yeah. happened. You called the band intuition, yeah. <laughs> you <Yeah>. know, <laughs> but, uh, no, but I, I think under the horizons, a, a very, very cool name. Um, we should, uh, let's play another track. Uh, what, uh, but I'm going to put you on the spot. I'll let you pick. What would, uh, what would you like to, uh, to hear next or to share with the audience? Maybe in and out. In and out. Yeah. That's a good catchy one for all yeah. of you out there. Yeah, yeah, I like that one. I, I, uh, like I said, I listened to the whole thing, and that's that's also one of the ones that uh, stood out to me. Um, are these all available? Are, are are these on Spotify and everything for people who want to hear them? Yes. Or? Okay. Yes, every streaming platform that you could possibly think of, the albums there, and also if you still listen to physical music, which I know it's a rare breed out there, but. For those of you that want to buy a CD, you can not only buy it off of our website under the horizon.org, but also it's on sale at all Bull Moose locations. Good. Uh, Music yeah. Connection down the road in Manchester and uh, Pitchfork in Concord. And also, funnily enough, uh, Tenny Farm Stand in Antrim, New Hampshire. Um, yeah, kind of a, it's weird to think of a metal band CD going on sale at a farm stand. But Do, do they have a, a CD uh, section? Uh, what? <laughs> no, actually, yeah. we're the first CD they've ever sold. Yeah, yeah. But, you know, we're, uh, what? Yeah, they're actually our best-selling location. We, really? You know, we're, we're, we're friends with the owner of it, and he wanted to support, so we're like, cool. you want to sell our CDs? Like, yeah, sure. So oh, we, <laughs> it's on sale, so, you know, you can buy cucumbers and corn and then a brand new CD to listen to on the way home. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. That's awesome. All right, let's give this a spin. Uh, this is called In and Out. If you are just joining us, we have Under the Horizon here with us live in studio, but uh, check this out.
That is catchy as hell. That is in <laughs> and out, and the band is under the horizon. And we have under the horizon here with us live in studio, if you are just joining us this Saturday morning, on Matt Connerton Unleashed. And for those of us who are just joining us, uh, so you've got you've got a show tonight. We should uh, we should mention that again for uh, for people just tuning in. Yeah, uh, show tonight, uh, Rochester Performing Arts Center, um, all ages, ten dollar cover charge, and uh, the doors open at seven. Uh, we're playing with uh, Day to Attend, which we talked about previously. Great yeah, band, yeah. And uh, actually, we're playing uh, with another band, a cover band that Izzy's in yeah, called uh, Tainted Hearts. Oh, cool! Yeah. Very cool. Very cool. Um, what's, uh, so yeah, tell us about that. Do you, does Tainted Hearts do a lot of shows and what do you, what kind of covers do you do? Well, we've, we haven't been together for too long, but, um, we did play a show actually at the RPAC and we also played one at the Hudson Old Homestay. Um, but we do mostly like rock, like more poppier rock cover songs. Okay. Yeah. You know. Okay. Cool. Cool. Uh, now what about you guys? Are either of you in other projects as well or? I'm in a lot, so Jordan, you go first. Of course, um, you are. You're a drummer. Yeah, but yeah, right. But yeah. right. Yeah. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I don't know. I think the only other um, projects that I'm in is a cover band that he's also in. Oh, okay. Room three hundred one. Um, we kind we covered. I I don't really think we have a specific genre that we stick to. Yeah. We just cover whatever is a hit song and sounds okay. good. Yeah. And, yeah. Yeah, it's cool. a student-led rock cover band that's actually connected to our high school. Right. Oh, but, no kidding. Yeah, the high school, when I first came in as a freshman, it was, like, just starting out. And, you know, they were playing, like, you know, Green Day, Nirvana, really basic, you know, intro-level stuff. But I could tell that some of the musicians in there were really good. And... To be honest with you, I saw the drummer they had at the time, and I didn't really think he was that good. So I eventually found myself behind the drum set, and then the rest was history. Yeah. Um, so yeah, we're it's a student-led rock cover band. So we play at like all the school band concerts, along with you know concert band and choir. But then we also do stuff like you know school festivals, you know like field days and stuff like that. And we also do some outside of school gigs but it's kind of been slowing down a little bit because me and jordan have been <laughs> obviously yeah. occupied with um this band here yeah and, yeah um no the reason i i made the the comment about well of course you're in other bands you're a drummer is because yes. you know it's it's a it's it's a subject on the show a lot mm -hmm. um every uh I think it even actually it even came up when uh, we were talking with uh, Silicon Kong earlier about how every drummer is in so many bands and it, you know yeah. because drummers are hard <laughs> to find. <laughs> I, I guess we are. I don't know. Yeah, it, yeah. We're always every drummer I've talked to. It's like yeah, I'm in three bands, yep. and, and <laughs> me myself, I'm also in three bands. Yeah. So you know, I guess we're hard to find, and you know, we just kind of we're like yeah, whatever. I can we can do both of these. Honestly, we're pretty bad. We're pretty famous for like cheating as musicians you know what i mean we're cheating on our previous bands with other bands and <laughs> stuff like that's pretty bad actually but you know whatever <laughs> yeah, yeah yeah um so what so you, uh what else so so there's a third band that you're in yeah um well kind of it's like just starting out oh, okay. uh, it's a band called blowflies they're out of keen oh. um and it's with uh a buddy that I actually met in the cover band room 301, the bass oh, okay. player, Doc Cassidy, wonderful bass player. But yeah, they're just starting out. It's more of a, I don't even know what you would call it, like a post, kind of grungy, kind of uh, Midwest emo, kind of a little bit of everything. So a little bit more out of my style, but um, they're just starting out and I've been playing with them. We've done one show together. Yeah, so. yeah. Um, yeah, my, my theory about w the reason with drummers, they're always in so many bands is because when you're, when you're growing up and you first become interested in playing an instrument you got to have the talk with the parents, right? You know, <laughs> yeah, a, yeah. a lot of parents are going to be like, uh, drums really? Yeah. Right, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, we had that conversation, but I mean, it, they were kind of used to it because I started off on guitar. Oh, you I, did? Yeah. At like six. And then I moved on to bass, then went back to guitar and I'm like, you know what? I don't really like 
or I like all both of these, but I'm not really that good at it. So I'll switch to drums. And then I finally, when I was 10 and I finally found my home behind the drum set, I was like, this is where I belong. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. Very yeah. cool. Did, um, did, did all three of you, did you all go to school together or? No, I, I'm in a different school than them. Oh, okay. Yeah. But you guys went to school together. Or yes. Did, or did you? Okay. Yeah. We just met in a couple years ago. Yeah. 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 We met in high school because uh, we went to separate middle schools, but we met in high school and then Izzy obviously went to Goffstown yeah. High School. So yeah. that's how we met at the Battle of the Bands because obviously we would have never met yeah. otherwise. Yeah, yeah. Chances are, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, so, yeah. yeah. Um, do you, are there any other bands that you kind of team up with? You know, it, 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 it sort of happens organically in my experience. And, you know, I was in a band that, that played with your dad's band a lot. We did a lot of shows together. Yeah, yeah. You know, sometimes bands just kind of, you know, you just, you end up teaming up. It just sort of happens. It, is there anybody else in the scene that, that you play a lot of shows with or? Not yet, unfortunately. Yeah. Um, we're trying to make our way out there and we're trying to, you know, try to also hopefully revitalize the scene a little bit because unfortunately a lot of it is, died so we're trying to you know find like-minded people and be yeah. like hey come on you know music's still alive let's go let's go play <laughs> yeah. shows and all that yeah so yeah not yet but we hope to find other bands out there who are like us who are willing to play shows with us you know we like friends so yeah <laughs> yeah, yeah. Do, do you feel like there's a there's a dearth of bands that are doing kind of what you're doing right now and locally or uh, not that i've like really met or anything like i don't see too many younger people playing rock or like heavy music at all yeah like yeah generation, a so. lot of the a lot of the younger talent in music that i see now it's you know rap you know that type of stuff which hey i'm not hating yeah yeah but it doesn't help us out right but, right, right. <laughs> yeah. um you know you know, I, I wish there was more younger bands, you know, rock music and stuff. But yeah, you know, it's just kind of how it is you know, today. No, it's interesting that you say that because, you know, I, I was talking earlier about how I, I feel that this kind of music is timeless. Mm -hmm. But it does occur to me it, again, if you were to just play this for me and say, you know, when do you think this was done? I wouldn't know. But I probably would assume that the members of the band were older than the three of you are because you're right. You don't yeah. see a lot of people necessarily your age doing this kind of music yeah. or, or at least doing it, you know, with this level of sophistication. Yeah. Because like I said, I some agree. of, some of this is, is, you know, complex and um, yeah, that's, that's interesting. I mean, I, you know, but again, you know, you've been together less than a year or two. So I assume as you go along, you'll meet other bands that you can kind of, yeah. like I yeah. said, you know, and it just happens. It just happens organically, right. you know? But um, we should play another uh, track from the album. Uh, what do you want to? Uh, what do you want to play next? You again? guys go with my. Uh, you within guys good with? Eyes. Yeah, within my eyes, I can't it's, talk. Within my okay. eyes, just let the guitar player talk. It's fine. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just the drummer. I don't know how to speak English. Right, right. Come on. <laughs> All right, we'll get. We'll give this one a spin. And uh, anything we should know about this before we play it? Um, we all. I think one of the main parts of it that sticks out. All three of us sing. Yeah. That's very um, true. Oh, okay. He does, I do verses, he does the chorus, and in the background you'll hear like a ooh or whatever. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> I'm no vocalist, but that's Izzy. <laughs> oh, okay. Um, yeah. yeah. Oh, very cool, very yeah. cool. All right, let's uh, give this a listen. Uh, if you're just joining us, the band is Under the Horizon. They're here with us live in studio, and this is called Within My Eyes. <laughs> When I see the light Whisper in my ear There are parallels I can feel the tears Falling down the night I can't breathe when I'm alone But I cannot talk when you're around I can't see on my own But you'll put my face in the ground Why can't I just be at home You spread your lies all over
It's got a big dramatic ending. I really like that a lot. That is called Within My Eyes. The band is under the horizon, and we've got all three members of the band here with us uh, live in studio on Matt Connerton Unleashed on this Saturday morning. Yeah, we were we were talking off air while it was playing. Um, that that's that song's got a touch of grunge. Um, which kind of sets it apart from a lot of these other songs. And Jordan, you were saying when you uh, online on uh, what was it on Apple iTunes? Music on Apple Music yeah. it uh, similar artists it comes up with like Deftones, Alice in Chains, stuff yeah. like that, very grungy or you know have that darker feel. I guess I don't know. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Of course, the the drums kind of ungrunge it a little bit <laughs> yeah, because you don't yeah. hear you don't hear double bass usually in grunge. <laughs> no. There's a band I cannot remember who they are now. Jenny, oh, you you probably don't remember either. It was a couple of years ago we had a band on who very grunge, except for the drums. It was a three piece band, uh, female singer. I can't. It's I can't, not ringing a bell I for me. But the, yeah, but the, there's a band from the area who yeah they're they're like very grunge, like not just a hint of it, except the double bass drum, right. which is cool because it's um it's it's a different sound, but I. I cannot. I I can picture them too, but I cannot remember the name. It'll come to me later on in the day when it no longer matters. But anyway, yeah. <laughs> but, I, but I really like that track. Now, now, where do you record? What's the recording process like? Uh, my house. Um, we so we started recording the drum tracks. We recorded that down in the band room. Um, we recorded in April, and it's in. Pretty much my basement is the band room, but, you know, so it was so cold. These poor guys were really? freezing their fingers <laughs> off. And uh, we recorded the drum tracks in pretty much like a day, day and a half maybe. And then we moved upstairs into my attic for the guitar tracks. And then we recorded vocals in my bedroom. So pretty much half of the house was a recording studio for like a week. Yeah. So, but, a week. yeah, just recording it anywhere we could. It would be more than a week. I don't know how long did we record for. I don't know. I forget. Probably a couple weeks at least. Couple right? maybe. That's not three weeks. He's saying yeah. three weeks. Three so weeks. He, yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. Oh, very cool. Uh, no, that's that's a good way to do it. You know, it's, it's it's um. You know, we live in an era too where you've got so many different options in terms of how you record. So, um, yeah. do you? Uh, I think you had said earlier too. You're already working on new material. Is that? Is that correct? Yeah. Do you have plans to record it soon, or are you kind of focused on the current album right now? I would say the current album yeah. right now. Yeah. And with the gigs that we have coming up, I feel that's what we're yeah. focusing on more than original new music. Right. Yeah, yeah. Although, speaking on gigs that are coming up, we're playing two of the new songs at the show oh, tonight, nice. like songs that are going on the next album. You know, yeah. No one's heard it, but we had extra times. So we're like, oh, we'll give the audience a little sneak peek of what's to come so yeah if any of you guys that are listening right now are coming to that you'll get to hear two new songs that you can hear right now oh very cool yeah. excellent excellent um are you gonna i, I mean uh, the the current run of shows uh, obviously you're keeping very busy um are you gonna try to keep up that pace or you know a lot of bands kind of slow down in the winter or that's when they kind of shift to to recording or writing or I mean, we'll just have to see how things go, you know? <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm hoping that the energy that we have right now, like, follows through even after the shows. Yeah. Um, But, like she said, only time will tell. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. Well, you're off to a great start. That's for sure. That's for sure. Thank you. Um, We should, so before we run out of time, and I, I do want to make sure we get one more uh, song in, too. Um, But let's remind everybody, for people listening live on Saturday, because you've got a show tonight, and then I also want to remind people, too, about the show tomorrow night. Yes. Uh, so tonight, uh, we're playing you're it. making me grab my notes again. <laughs> Come on. Um, so yeah, we're playing at Rochester Performing Arts Center. Mm -hmm. um, all ages, $10 cover. The doors open at 7. Show starts at 8. It's us with Tainted Hearts and Day to Attend. And then Sunday, tomorrow, we open up for Great White um, at Tupelo Music Hall. Uh Doors open at 5.30, and if you want to catch more of us or maybe you want to catch a different band, we're opening up for Queensryche on the 30th, also at Tupelo Music Hall, and the doors open for 6.30 at that. Outstanding. Outstanding. And uh, where should people go online to uh, keep up with everything that y'all are doing? Where, where's the best place? I mean, we're on a lot of different social media, so yeah. right. Facebook, Instagram. Yep. 
you just look up under the horizon. Yeah, should, basically. Should, should come up, yeah. Yeah, and uh, our website, too, underthehorizon.org. That's a good place to come, see new, uh, hear the music, news, get some photos if you want to, join the mailing list. And we also have merch on sale over there. So, yeah. Excellent. Excellent. In a moment, we'll, uh, we'll play one more track. But, uh, Jenny, do you want to? Uh, so, we should mention, well, we'll have you plug, go ahead and plug your website. And then we got to mention a couple things uh, coming up. You want to tell me the couple of things or no? <laughs> what, what? <laughs> I'm only kidding. <laughs> you can find out more about me at jencoffee.com, J E N N C O F F E Y.com. Yes. And you can find 12 of my darkest paintings. For viewing at the Nashua Creatives Collective, Midnight Creatives Collective. Now you got me doing it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and at Terminus. Yes. Where Green Jello will be playing next Tuesday night. Yes. A free show, 21 plus. And you had a hand in booking that. I did. I get yes. to add that to my little resume. Yes. Green, <laughs> green Jello slash Green Jelly. Don't know what to call them. I guess uh, the flyer they have says Green Jello. So, yeah. I, so I guess I, I think at this point, I, th- I think Bill, when they were here, said that uh, legally they're not in any peril at this point because it's, good. it's been like 30 years That's since, true. since they were threatened with litigation. But, <laughs> By Jello. Yeah. I don't, I don't know if you all are familiar with. Uh, yes. Green Jelly, Three Little Pigs. Yes, yes, yes. yes. Yeah. We had them. They, they played in Manchester and then uh, we had them on the show the next day because they, they played on a Friday night and then they were kind enough to come in and. Uh, I asked Bill Manspeaker about it because it's, you know, like they were green jello, but then yeah. they became green jelly because they were threatened with uh, litigation because green jello obviously is trademarked. But he said something about now they just, they, I think they actually prefer to be called green jello because it's been yeah. like 30 years and yeah. they're not going to get sued now um, <laughs> in theory. But, uh, but yeah, so it's like, if you look them up, there's sometimes they're green jelly, sometimes they're green jello, but, but yeah, they're going to be at uh, terminus in Nashua on Tuesday night. Uh, free show 21 plus BYOB Jenny and I will be there and uh, bring your pool noodle if you're uh, if you're going to the show but uh, we encourage people and if you go you can check out uh, Jenny's artwork which is uh, on the walls there but um, under the horizon thank you again all three of you thank you for having us yeah. on. Thank thank you. You. this has been wonderful and uh, what track should we play to, uh, to end the show today maybe under the horizon under the horizon ah yes the uh your title track, if you will. Any anything we should know about this song? Um, it has a really sad, dark story to it. But um, I wrote it uh, on someone that I had lost um, a couple of years back to suicide. So. Oh wow! Yeah. Okay. So this this is about that. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you know, I, I always say it's something we we talk about on the sh- on the show a lot is um, you know, if you can take something negative, but create something from it you know that's really kind of the best way to deal with things that's like a great it's such a great form of therapy to you know (laughs) to be able to take a traumatic event but then do something creative with it so um so uh we will uh we will end with this but uh thank you to everyone who joined us today on the program if you miss any part of the show it'll be up at just a little bit at wmnhradio.org and at my website mattconnerton.com and we leave you with this uh the song is under the horizon and the band is under the horizon And uh, we'll talk to you all a little bit later. Bye, everybody.